I haven't done a game jam in a while. I wanted to do a game jam video and I figured this was a good exercise for me to do because I always wanted to make an FPS anyway. So I have an idea for what I want to make. My idea was sort of like the game down well, which is where you're at the bottom of well. No, you're falling. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, it's the opposite of down well. <laughs> My idea <laughs> is you start at the bottom of a well. Is that what a rocket launcher looks like? I look up <laughs> what a player gets a, that's pretty close, rocket launcher. There's gonna be platforms and they have to shoot down and as you might guess, rocket jump up and out of the well. And then to add some time pressure to it, some lava here at the bottom, that's also moving upwards. So you're basically outrunning a pool of lava that is chasing you. I call it up well, <laughs> time to make it. So first things first, I set up my project and started pulling in the assets I use on almost every project like Lean Tween, Master Audio, Cinemachine, some object pooling scripts and stuff like that. I also have an FPS project I started a long time ago, so I went ahead and pulled the character controller and camera look scripts from that into this project so I can repurpose those too. I followed a tutorial on getting pixel perfect textures, so I modeled the well segment that I'll be able to repeat vertically to generate our well with. Generally, I try not to get too ahead of myself with art, but since I got this thing perfectly UV unwrapped, I went ahead and found a Creative Commons Zero Brick texture which I downscaled right in Unity and switched to point filtering to get some nice crispy pixelated textures. Since lava was going to be rising from under the player, I modeled some metal support rings that will pretend to hold this grate in place so you can see the lava rising beneath you. Finally, I imported my lava shader from Bun, put an orange point light on the lava plane for light, and made a simple gun out of cubes so I could visualize how the player's perspective might end up looking. I forgot to record the actual modeling process, but I got this nice chunky rocket launcher model made and started working on getting it in game. Then I had some cameras set up to work on so the launcher always stays on screen and never clips through walls or the floor. I made a second camera called my no clip camera and gave it the ability to only see objects on the no clip layer. I then prevented the main camera from seeing the no clip layer, which means although they look like they're in the same world and like from the same perspective, the rocket launcher can't intersect with anything on the other layers. Next, it was time to get our launcher shooting actual exploding rockets. The basic idea is every frame, the projectile looks out the distance that it would move to the next frame to see if it hits anything. If it does, we can spawn an explosion at the point of collision. Once I had reliable collisions, I modified the character controller script so that in addition to normal movement, there's an external force variable that's also applied to the player every frame. Then I added some drag by reducing our external force by an exponential value each frame. With this in place, I can add an explosive force to the player by finding the difference between the player and explosion's position and applying a strong force to the player in that direction. I also added a fall off so the distance the player is launched depends on how close they were to the center of the explosion. Getting all of this to feel right took a good hour or two of tinkering with gravity, speed, and drag variables, but once it was right, I felt like I had tight control over the character and could reliably explode myself in a direction on purpose. The next day, I got started with some investigation into use cases for a floating origin point mechanic. Last night I got worried that if a player progressed too far, they'd start hitting weird decimal rounding errors, but after investigating and testing up to 5000 meters myself and not hitting any errors, I decided not to worry about it. I modeled a simple rocket to replace the stretched cube I was using and started thinking about level generation ideas and the UI. I started kind of late so I didn't get much done on this day, but fumbling around with some simple cubes gave me the idea for some more complex moving platforms that I would implement the next day. The day after, I wanted to start putting together things I know I'll need, so I programmed the height UI element to update with the player's height. Then it was time to finally tackle platforms. About a year ago, I started prototyping a low poly game where you throw bombs in a dungeon, kind of like a first person Binding of Isaac, and in that I had made a floating eyeball enemy. It was great because the model is always just a sphere, it's not hard for me to texture, and once their simple chase script is in, you have an eye staring at you and chasing you, a terrifying enemy. So I figured I could have these enemies spawn around you in the well, appearing threatening to the player, but in reality being their only means of platforming out. 
If the enemies spawn on a timer and can be killed by the player's rockets and lava, managing the eyeballs around you to make sure you have enough to launch off of becomes a little game in itself. I made a nice chunky unwrapped icosphere and painted a staring eyeball, then took it into Photoshop to make a normal map to get a little extra detail from lighting. I programmed them to chase the player at a pretty slow speed and take a bit of knockback from rocket explosions. They spawn on a timer with a little bit of randomness and are all part of an object pool, so we're never instantiating new game objects, only activating and deactivating pre-made ones. With these simple mechanics in place, even without having lava or enemy damage, it was pretty fun to try and climb and rocket jump myself from one eye to the next to climb the well. So I was excited to know that I was on the right track. The next day, I started polishing a bit by pulling in VFX crafts I had made for other projects and adjusting them to fit this style. I added a trail to the rocket projectiles by pulling in these fuse sparks and the rocket launcher exhaust cloud by making the explosion effect gray. The rocket launcher itself was also feeling very stiff on the screen, so I looked up this thing called a Lissajou curve and used that to add some rocket launcher sway. I also started making and collecting sound effects, like this amazing bubbling lava sound that's just some dude cooking corn syrup on their stove. I also added a little knockback animation to the launcher when firing since holding it perfectly still did not feel right. By the end of this day, things were sounding, looking, and feeling much juicier. So last night I tried to build and play the game and it did not look quite right. And the reason for that is, I've been playing at a resolution of 480 by 270 in the editor, since that's the resolution I want the game ultimately to play at. So to get the game's resolution to actually output at 480 by 270 but still have things like legible, high definition UI elements, I needed to add a third camera. Now, the first two cameras, the main and no clip cameras, basically just assemble this 480 by 270 pixel render texture by layering the game world, then the rocket launcher, which is output to this quad. Next, I started blocking out the game over screen with information I thought might be significant to showing how a player did. I made a couple global variables like rockets fired, eyeballs killed, and whether or not a personal best had been set that the game keeps track of as you play and summarizes in this neat little screen at the end. So, the eyeball enemies, I decided, have two health, meaning they either need to be jumped on or have a rocket fired at them twice in total before they die. One problem I was encountering though is that if you fire a rocket as you're falling and the rocket hits the eye as the player lands on the eye, it dies basically instantly, leaving the player nothing to jump on. To remedy this, I decided to add iframes, a few frames of invincibility applied to an enemy after they're attacked to prevent spammy deaths. To complement this, I decided the player should have a limited number of rockets that they can carry at once, refilling only when they kill an enemy. That way, they're balancing bouncing on eyes with rocket jumping on eyes based on how much ammo they have to work with. To help with this, I added a UI element on the screen so you can see how many rockets you have and a reload sound effect when you acquire a new one. Then for the final development session, I wanted to polish the game over screen, so I did some research on using text animator via script and ended up with a nice screen that quickly goes from one stat to the next with nice clean animations. I wondered if I needed to make a main menu, but decided that I could write the game's instructions on the wall of the well, complementing the gritty gameplay. I also needed music, but after only a few minutes of looking on open game art, found this trumpety trap beat that seemed really fitting. I programmed it so the music starts on the first explosion of a rocket, giving the player some chill time before they decide the action begins. As some final polish, I added a low pass filter to the music using an audio mixer snapshot and programmed the game over screen to alert from the normal music to a low pass version, adding to the feedback when you die. And that was pretty much it. I played it one more time to make sure I hadn't missed anything, and then went ahead and submitted my jam game a few days early. Despite having come up with the concept right away, the game wouldn't be nearly as fun if I hadn't gone through the process of finding the fun and developing on that. I was really surprised with how many cooldowns, timers, and iframe-like features that I had to add to get the game playing right, and without any one of those features, the game would be far too easy or far too hard. I'm super satisfied with the balance that I ended up striking, and I feel like this is the best jam game I've ever made by far. I was really pleasantly surprised when the game ended up rising to the popular section of the jam submissions. One morning I woke up and a little game magazine had even put Upwell up on the front page of their website and made a YouTube video playing it. So if you guys want to play it too, it's free and the link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching, love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.